We live in an age of information and technology. But it is a sad truth to say knowledge seems to be going down. An age of information and technology, but knowledge is not abounding. We are aware of the word knowledge. And we use it often. But unfortunately, majority of us do not know what knowledge really is. Peter, in 2 Peter 1.5, is telling us that besides all that he has said, given all seriousness, we are to add to our faith virtue. Because faith is a given. We've come into faith. We've come into a relationship with God. And that's a fact. That's true. That is fundamental. There is no question about our relationship to God or with God. That is why we are here this morning. We have a living relationship with him. Hallelujah, someone. Amen. But he says, to this faith must be added virtue. And we spoke about virtue. I will encourage those of us that couldn't Make it last week too. If it's put on the website, just listen to it. Praise God. So that I don't go back to it. But then to virtue, we are to add knowledge. Hallelujah. Amen. Knowledge. But as we said earlier, knowledge is something we often assume we do know. But majority of people do not know what knowledge really is. Because if we did, knowledge would be abounding. Information abounds. Statistics abound. Data abound. But no knowledge. But the earlier generation had knowledge. They had it. But oftentimes, we will not go back to revisit the past to understand. Because before you and me came on the scene, the word knowledge was already there. What did, why did they call this thing knowledge? That is what we need to find now. Hallelujah. Amen. Why the word knowledge? Knowledge from the from most English dictionaries, means facts, information, skills. Some good ones go on to say, familiarity with an experience, which would be better. But facts, information, is not necessary knowledge. But the word knowledge, which Peter uses here, that's in the New Testament. So, so, so this morning, because knowledge is an issue, but Peter wants us to have it. And the Bible, if you go through the Bible, almost every majority of the Bible makes knowledge something essential that we must have. So this morning, I'm going to spend my time talk, talking about knowledge. Hallelujah. Amen. Knowledge. Seeking knowledge in God's kingdom. Knowledge in the New Testament comes from the word we pronounce gnosis. Gnosis. In the Old Testament, the word is dahath 
Oh, the hat. The hat. Now, the New Testament knows is, is based or comes from the Old Testament use of the word, which is the dahat. Now, knowledge, as we know it as one word, actually comes from two picture, from two pictures. Two pictures. The first picture, that's two pictures com combined. The first picture is door. And the second picture is an eye. A door and an eye. It is from these two pictures that we have our word knowledge. The heart. Someone say the heart. Okay. Not the heart. The heart. Okay. Now, a door in basic English, a door in basic English refers to and refers to a barrier that gives access or, or restricts towards another place. That's in the English, right? A door. When the door is there, it either gives access to a place or restricts access to a place. But the sense in which the door is used in the word knowledge, or from which we get the word knowledge, it is used in the sense of a doorway. Doorway. No, now, door, a doorway symbolizes an entrance to another place. Just follow me. Just go with me. We are talking about knowledge, which comes from two pictures in the Old Testament. The first one is door. Second one is an eye. And the door, the sense here is a doorway. And a doorway it symbolizes access to another environment, access to another field, access to another world, access. Anybody ever listen or read C.S. Lewis's Narnia, The Wardrobe and the Witches? You remember how, if you go home, it's just a very good thing to watch. You remember how Lucy, just looking around the house, opens a door, a door. She opens a door, and that door leads her into a total, complete, different world. That world existed just behind the door. But they had no, they had no clue that that world existed. But by opening that door, so Silas Lewis, is, with, his, with his imagination, was telling us something here. There is a world to be experienced. And the access to it is through a doorway. So a doorway provides access to another place. Hallelujah. Amen. Now let's talk about the eye. Hallelujah. Amen. The eye, as we all know it, this eyes, two eyes, everyone has got two eyes. Speaking generally. That with your eye, you are able to see what is around you. Okay? But how many of us are aware that seeing things around you doesn't mean that you are able to make much of it? It takes something else. You can be seeing things around you. But although you all got two eyes, you realize that though you see this thing, but if you don't know what this thing is about, it really means nothing to you. Although you can see it. You can see certain things, 
but really it doesn't help you, it doesn't improve you, it doesn't make you any better. But you have got eyes, to, but you got eyes and you can see things. But at least you were able to see. But the eye, there, there is another eye. It's the inner eye, which the Bible calls the eyes of your understanding. There is another eye, and that is the eye we are talking about. Praise God. It is by your inner eye that you are able to really make sense of things. Some of you, before you got born again, you were living your life as usual. Hello? And then one day, it struck you that the life you are living is not worth living anymore. And you need to make a turn. Which eye did you use to make that decision? It was not the natural eye, but the inner eye. For you probably watching us, maybe you're not born again yet. But you see, you came to a realization that something was going to destroy you and you moved away from it. What made you move away from it? You've been looking at it all, probably you've been in, in that thing maybe for years, but one day it struck you that, that this thing is not right and you moved away from it. It was the eyes of the inner man that caused you to now realize that I need to move away from this thing. That is the eye we are talking about this morning. Is anyone hearing me? Yes. So knowledge comes from these two words, door and eye. So if you put it together, we have the door of your eyes. So knowledge then, what, the, what we call knowledge, is really, in its root meaning, means the doorway of your eyes. I'll say it again. Just in case I have lost you, because I, I don't want you. Someone say knowledge. knowledge. Oh, come on, say with some conviction. Say with some vim. Knowledge. knowledge. Now, knowledge is the door of your eye. Knowledge means the doorway of your eye, the door of your eye, the door of your eye, the door of your eye. The doorway of your eye. That means knowledge really is what causes your eyes to see beyond from here to there. Okay, we need to work it a, a, a little bit. Hallelujah. Amen. Knowledge as the door of your eyes is the means, is the means by which you access the possibilities that are the moment you are blind to. Am I in the right place? Yes. Okay. It means becoming conscious, becoming aware of another field Becoming aware, becoming conscious, becoming alert, being awakened to another world, which you are supposed to be aware of, but at the moment, I'm not aware of. Knowledge, knowledge, which is the door of your eye. Is what gives you access to that. <sighs> Hallelujah. Amen. You see, like I said earlier on, 
It is good for my eyes to be able to see the keyboard, to be able to see this thing, to be able to see you, to be able to see that, to be able to do all that. Okay? It's good to be able to see everything here. It's good. But to make sense and to be able to interact with my environment, to be able to see, to be able to, to understand the implication, what these things mean, what things mean, how they, how they affect me, and everything, I need knowledge. Okay. Oh, God have mercy here. God have mercy here. Hallelujah. Amen. To be able to make sense of the world around us, to be able to make sense of what lies here on the other side, I need the door of my eyes, the doorway of my eyes. I need that. Because knowledge is a doorway of my eyes. It's a doorway of my eyes. Knowledge is the door of my eyes. So if I don't have knowledge, that doorway is not there. I'm just stuck here. Hallelujah. You see, it's God's plan for you to succeed, to profit, to benefit, to be productive. It's God's plan. But for that to be possible, for me to have the creativity, for me to be able to move into all those things, fulfill my purpose, achieve what I need to achieve, to be successful in the kingdom of God, and everything I need access. To be able to see how to get into that thing. And it's called knowledge. Okay, I'll try another angle. Praise God. Right. Let me try another angle. Um, knowledge, right? Knowledge is not information. Facts is not knowledge. Okay? I may have information there, information there, information there, information there, information all scattered up about me. But until that information, that, those facts are organized in a certain way that it, it makes sense, I do not benefit from all those facts. Oh, yes. It has to be organized in a certain way, then it becomes beneficial. To me, then I, I have understanding. Then I be, then my, that, so then, then the door of my eyes is open. Whoa! Yes. To a whole new world. Hallelujah. That's what knowledge is. It's called knowledge. So knowledge is not just information. Knowledge is critical for every one of us sitting here. That's we right. need it. That's right. It's like the air we breathe. We need it. Because without that, we are stuck. We are hemmed in. I'm stuck. So I need Knowledge. And it is organized information that makes me able to not interact with things around me. Okay. Let's try this other side. Let's try this other, other side. The word knowledge and the word know, these two words, they are parts of speech of the same idea, okay? To know is a verb. And knowledge, but knowledge is what? The noun. So they are part of speech of the same idea. 
Okay? Knowledge. But to know. But they're the same thing. They are part of speech of the same idea. Right. Now, let's see. In the Bible, to know. Hello? To know. To know often means to be intimate with somebody. Come with me to Genesis chapter 4, please. Genesis, Genesis, Gen, Gen, Genesis 4. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you with me so far? Yes. God have mercy. Amen. This morning is heavy. Okay? But we need it. Genesis chapter 4 verse 1. Genesis 4 verse 1, please. Genesis 4 verse 1. Genesis chapter 4 verse 1, please. Okay. In Genesis 4 verse 1, it reads, And Adam knew his wife, and she conceived. Hello? And Adam did what? Knew, knew his wife and conceived. What are the... <laughs> What does the word know here means? Intimacy. Conception. Productivity. Came from the intimacy. And that is what to know means. So when we say you know something, you've been intimate with somebody. Ah, oh, you're still not getting me. Hello. Praise God. Can I have every attention here, please? Undivided attention, please. Because if you get this, your life will not be the same again Amen. from today. Gosh. Okay. The same chapter 4, verse 17. And Cain knew his wife. Genesis 4 verse 17. And Cain knew his wife, and she did what? Conceived and bare what? Enoch. Enoch. Amen. Amen. Same word again, knew. Yes. Now, do you understand why in the Bible, when God talks about knowledge, he means more than facts about God? Yes. So when we talk about knowledge of God, Knowing God, we are not talking about filling this head of yours or of mine with facts about God, but rather becoming intimate with God. And when you become intimate with someone or with something, what it means is that you are into that person or that thing and that thing is into you to the point that now we cannot differentiate between you and that thing. It sometimes expressed as into me you see. Intimacy. Into me you see. You see into me so clearly like a husband and wife become intimate. You see into her or into him clearly. Intimacy. So this is the thing. With persons, we can understand. Now, let's extend it to facts. So there are facts organized. For you to have knowledge from these facts, it means that now you are beginning to interact in such a way that you become intimate with, with this information. You become intimate with it such that now you and that information are one. You and that information become what? One. So when we talk about the knowledge of God, the Bible is there, God's words are there, God's laws are there, 
but you begin to engage with God's laws or God's words until you are so much into God's law and God's law is so much into you, you become intimate. You're still not getting me. You're still not getting me. That is what God meant when he said to Joshua. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Joshua. What I mean by intimate, God used the word meditate. He said, Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein. Do it in the day, do it in the night, and what? Thou shalt make thy way prosperous and have good success. Indicating that, indicating that you are here right now, impoverished, poor, sorrowful, in poverty, downtrodden, sorrow, de defeated, no victory, but there is victory in this side of the world where you are standing. But the access to that thing is knowledge, 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 knowledge. But this information or facts available, you've got to become intimate with them. As you become intimate with them, become one with them, you automatically have become that information, that knowledge. You're able to now move into this area and experience success. Experience the victory. Experience the joy. There's joy about you. There's joy. There's victory in Christ. Amen. Opportunities are bound towards us. Amen. But the knowledge to access them is there. And God is saying, if you can meditate in my word, become intimate. I am successful. I am victorious. I am indefeatable. God is saying, I'm victorious. I'm champion, I conquer, I'm above the world. If you can then now interact, become intimate with me, you will be transformed and you'll begin to operate as I operate. Someone didn't hear me. And that is what knowledge does. That's what knowledge is for. So knowledge is not something for some people. While others sit down unconcerned about knowledge. As for me, I don't care. All I care is to just, just use my boot strength, get some money from some company, and then just eat and sleep and wake up. No! Knowledge is critical. Yes. Your joy, your peace, your safety, your productivity, your effectiveness, everything is bundled up in knowledge. That is why he says, add to your virtue, knowledge. Yes. But when knowledge of knowledge is absent, mm. you're in trouble. Yeah. Now, so far, I have been speaking about knowledge in general. Yes. This cuts true for unbelievers, it cuts true for believers. The reason why unbelievers seem to be doing what they're doing is knowledge. It's knowledge. But when we become Christians, we have access to the highest form of knowledge. But unfortunately, most of the time, we do not major on that. We don't. We don't go for, we don't try to find out what the others know, and we don't even find out about the supreme knowledge we have either. You see, for the king, in the kingdom of God, the supreme knowledge we are to access is the knowledge of God. The second knowledge on the line is knowledge of yourself. And the third in the kingdom of God that we need is knowledge of life. Be free, but a supreme. If you don't start with the first, you are in trouble. And that's where most unbelievers are in trouble with. 
Because some of them have gone to number two. Yeah. Not yourselves, so they know, they, they know about themselves. Some have even bypassed that and gone for number three. Knowledge of life. And they've invested, they've become intimate. Call someone who's a financial expert to come and talk to you about money. And they will show you, and you will sit down and say, wow, wow, wow. They will talk to you about how to invest, how to make money. Why? Because they become aware and they've invested themselves in that so much. They've become the information. Yes. So then, and, be, once, and once you come into the information, you move freely. Because you become that information. You become intimate with it. I'm coming. Just, I'm not trying to move you into the, the world sphere of life and becoming, uh, no, uh, just, just, just hold on. I'm just trying to show you some, some, something. Right now, if I ask you to make a car, <laughs> Pastor, are you serious? But there are people who have become so knowledgeable about making cars. When they start talking to you about all of this, oh, this technical stuff is just too much. Yes, they've become intimate with that kind of information and they can do it. There are people who do music and they become so intimate with the music stuff that you can put them anywhere and they will pull it off. Because they become intimate. They've opened themselves up and they become intimate with that information. They've studied it, look into it, it's become them and they become the information. So they move into that thing freely. And it's called knowledge. It's the door of your eye. The door of your inner eye. It opens you to that world of possibilities. Now, that's the third kind of knowledge. There's a first knowledge, which is called the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Knowledge of God. When this is lacking, God says, I cannot help you. God says, I cannot help you. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, please. Hosea 4 and the 6th verse. Come with me. Hosea chapter 4 and the 6th verse. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you with me so far? Okay, just stay with me here. Just stay with me. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. My people. Hallelujah. Amen. God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. See how serious it is? You reject knowledge of me? I will also reject you. That is, I cannot help you. That thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Sorry, are you with me so far? Yes. Now, for us to understand very clearly, I want to take you to verse 1. So you get a picture very well. Come with me to the verse 1, please. And, and, and walk me through. Hosea chapter 4, verse 1. Now hear this. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, for the Lord has a controversy. I have a dispute. I have a quarrel with you, with the inhabitants of the land. You people of the land, I have a problem with you. It is this, because there is no truth, number one. There is no mercy, number two. No knowledge of God in the land. But guess what? The first two are a result of the third. God is the embodiment of truth. He is the embodiment of mercy. So when there is no knowledge of God, there will be no knowledge of the truth. Neither will, be, neither will there be any knowledge of mercy. People won't show mercy in the land. And people will not exhibit the truth of God because there's no knowledge of God. And guess what? If the Christians themselves are not excelling in the, in the knowledge of God, where is the land going? 
That land is in trouble. Excuse me, we are not talking about facts, about God. Now we know what knowledge is. Knowledge, uh, no, is becoming intimate with the information. So much so that you are the information, information is, is you. There's no separation. So, so knowledge of God, we become so knowledgeable about God, when we move and we come to a place, it's like God has appeared here. Hello? God has appeared here. Not that you appear here. But then it's like another unbeliever with a label, Christian, disgusting. If we appear anywhere as Christians and it looks like another unbeliever with a label, Christian, it is disgusting. Because we are supposed to be people of the knowledge of God. We become so intimate with God, we, and He has become intimate with us, such that there is no separation. So when we stand, we can look like represent Him. Then there will be truth. That means the truth of God must fill the land. The mercy of God must fill the land. And the number of Christians in the land right now is enough to do that. Hallelujah. Then in verse 2, he says, By swearing, by lying, by killing, by stealing, and committing adultery, they break out and blood touches blood. Therefore shall the land do what? Do you hear that? The land shall... Any time the people of God move away, what happens to the land? The land suffers. Genesis. Genesis. Because you've done this, the land upon which you is cursed. That is why we must arise as sons. That's what Romans teaches. The creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Sons, our family extenders. Oh, someone, someone didn't hear me. Sons are family extenders. So when the Bible talks about sons, it's not talking about the male gender, but those that extend the kingdom of God. Kingdom extenders, sons. And the earth is waiting for the manifestation on the sons of God. You want me? Sorry, is someone hearing me? The land shall mourn. Everyone that dwelleth in the land shall languish. Oh my goodness. With the beast of the field, even the animals shall suffer. With all the fowls of the heaven, the fish of the sea shall be taken away. Now, do you wonder why there's so things are happening everywhere? But those of you that like palm oil, you buy palm oil and it's made with dye, red dye. And you're drinking. Do you know what all of those, all of those things are going on? It's because there's no knowledge of God in the land. And by knowledge, we don't mean facts about God. Jesus walk, Jesus walk, walk, walk on the water. It's in John. Jesus healed a cripple. It's in Mark. What does that do to you? What does that information imply? What does that mean? So no fact, but knowledge. What does him walking on the water mean? What does him coming up before he created everything, said let there be light. What does that mean to you and me? Indicating that before you step into any project, there must be light. In the kingdom of God, Light talks about understanding, talks about knowledge. Have it before you move on. Hallelujah. Amen. Yet, verse 4 let no man strive nor reprove another, for thy people are, are as they that strive with the priests. There's no point reproving anybody. 
Therefore shall it shall thou shalt fall in the day, and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night, and I will destroy thy mother. And then the verse six, my people, my people are destroyed for what? Do you know what that word destroy there means? It means to be cut off. Let me break that down. The cut off also means to be cut down. Hello? It means to cut. It means a tree is growing. Cut down. It also means silenced. Did anybody hear me? It, it, it also means what? My people are silenced for lack of knowledge. It means silence. That word destroy there means si to be silenced, to be cut down, to be shut up. My people are shut up. They are silenced. To be of no effect. Another meaning. It means to be of no effect. So my people have been called, sorry, it means to seize. To seize. My people have been called, have been seized. They cannot operate for lack of knowledge. So when we lack the knowledge of God, when we think that it is, it is okay, let God be, let me also be, we don't realize that actually we are being zipped. We're being cut down. We are being made nothing. Salt, we become salt, trampled over. We become light, covered with a bushel. That's what it is. So the only way to lift the bushel, to call the soul, to sow the earth one more time, is to come rise up and begin to seek the knowledge of God. Amen. The highest form of knowledge. The highest form of knowledge. Take God's word and begin to meditate upon God's word until that word gets under your skin. It becomes you and you are in God and God in you. And when you step out now, hallelujah, there's no limitation, no defeat, hallelujah, no failure on your part. Praise God Almighty. Peter says, if you do these things, you will not be barren. You will not be unfruitful. You will be effective. Second Peter 1 verse 8. He says, if these things be in you, if there be faith, there be knowledge, if there be knowledge, you will abound. You will not be poor. You will not be broken. Oh, hallelujah. You will succeed. Hallelujah. Let me come home. Let me come home. I've been speaking on that philosophical level. Let me, let me come home. What it simply means is this. That challenge you are having. Let me start with the home. That challenge you are having in the home. You need knowledge. You need knowledge. That problem with the marriage. You need knowledge. If you're not married yet. And you are yet to get married. Get all the Christian books on marriage. Read them. Yes, must, yes, become voracious, you know, you know, digest them like, hallelujah, yeah. and whatever you are in, you are in the family, you've got a wife, you've got, you, you, you've got children, begin to be, seek knowledge in that, in that area, become knowledgeable, but like I said, the most important knowledge to acquire is the knowledge of God, hallelujah. because if you don't start from there, you will be delving into knowledge that is not beneficial to you. Yes. But when you start with the knowledge of God, it becomes the map. It will direct you. That information is destructive. I don't want it. That information is good. That one is not good. You begin to know what is right and what is wrong. Because you've already are into God. And God is truth. Hallelujah. 
Because God is truth. Whatever is not true, you will know and you will reject it. So be, let's seek first of all the knowledge of God. Become intimate. Hallelujah. And as Psalm 92 verse 14 says, even in our old age, we will continue to bear fruit. Hallelujah. Don't tell me, well, I am old now. It's all over. No. Are you dying tomorrow? No. <laughs> Seek knowledge. That's it. Ask someone, are you dying tomorrow? If they say no, tell them, seek knowledge. Seek knowledge. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell them, seek knowledge. Seek knowledge, seek knowledge of God. Seek knowledge of God. Hallelujah. Knowledge of God. Seek the knowledge of God. Prime import. Prime. It is the most important knowledge to seek. Become. Take it. Digest it. Last night, as I was lying down, when I was going to sleep, I said, you know what? Let me just do some reading, reading over in Hosea. And as I was going, oh my goodness, something was moving through my body. And I said, oh my goodness. It, it was just so, it was just too much to bear. You came out and realized, oh my goodness, something has happened to you. Unfortunately, for some Christians, their Bible study is like the news reading or the newscaster. The news reader does not have any emotions about the news she, she's presenting. She just says, says to them, so, 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 there's a murder in, 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 um, in, in tribalistic town. <laughs> I don't want to mention any town someone says, you said it happened there, no. There's, there were three murder in, in KKKK the town. Three boys were stabbed in the heart. Their eyes were gorged out. Uh, and then she says it and then moves on. As if what she said doesn't mean anything. And for some Christians, that is their knowledge of God. It's just facts, information. They have no relationship with the information. There's no intimacy there. But you want to get into it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh my goodness. Yes. Do you love the scriptures? Yes. Do you love God's word? Yes. The knowledge of God. Yes. Let's love it. Add to, your, add to virtue, knowledge yes. of God. Yes. Add to virtue what? Knowledge of God. Take the scriptures. Read it. What is God saying here? I want to encourage you. Friday services, what is happening here is awesome. We are not preaching like I'm doing here. We are diving into the, everyone is diving in, into it together. It's brilliant. Come and be part of it. Don't stay at home. Because you are cheating yourself. Tell him about, if you're not coming, you are cheating yourself. Tell him. You are cheating yourself. Your success. Your victory, your opportunities, it's all in that. Accessing God's knowledge. If you are not accessing God's knowledge, you are just planning for defeat. Hello? Hello? Is someone hearing me? I'm talking about seeking knowledge in God's kingdom. Knowledge of God, that's supreme. They need to know about yourself, knowledge, knowledge about you. Why you are here, your, your purpose. What you are here for. And what you must give yourself to. And then life. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You are doing a job, we don't really, really understand so much about that job. Get information about that job you are, you are doing. Become informed. Like I said earlier, you are in a marriage. Learn about it. Hallelujah. Amen. 
It's about gathering knowledge about marriage that made me understand that actually knowledge, marriage, is, made, is meant to make me holier than when, than when I was single. Yeah, he, 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 he didn't hear me. And actually, I am in to make her better than I met her. It's not the other way around. It's not come to feed me so I become like a pig. No. I refuse that. I am in rather to make her better than I pick, than I, than I, than I, than I, than I saw her. It changed my mentality to, to, totally. Hallelujah. Amen. About the home. I don't give a toss what the world want to do. Let them say what they want to say. It is the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. And if we are imbibing ourselves in the knowledge of God and of ourselves and of life, whatever schemes they come up with, we will beat it. Why? Because truth cannot be defeated. Bury the truth. A thousand years, truth will resurrect. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When they bury truth in three days' time, truth resurrected. Truth will always resurrect. Truth is supreme. Truth rules. Seek the knowledge of God. And wherever you go, let men and women feel. Let them feel the knowledge of God, that God is present. Because the knowledge of God makes God into you and you into God. It means intimacy. Hallelujah. When the Lord dawned this thing on my heart, I sat in them in my study when the thing is done on us. Oh my goodness, God. So I have been, I, I, I have been my own worst enemy. I have been my own worst enemy. Instead of going for knowledge to break forth in this arena, I have been sitting down, maybe praying or something. And I've been praying, 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 and, and he hasn't done it. When all I had to do was go for the knowledge in that area so that I can break through. And I've been sitting down there on my bum, not doing nothing. God have mercy on us. Is someone hearing me this morning? That wherever you find out, you are lacking, you are sitting still, then I work and begin to seek knowledge in that area, so you begin to break through. Hallelujah. But let the knowledge of God be supreme, mm-hmm. so that you know whatever knowledge you go for, you know that this is a truth, I reject that one, because there is truth out there. There's truth. God has given truth to many people. They've written them down. They are in books. They are wherever. Seek them. Go for them. Yes. Let it never be said about you that if you put a book here and you put the money here the Christian will go for the money and leave the book let it not be said about you let it be said you go for the book because for the book you will get more of that hello let it never be said if you want to hide something from you, from about you, if you want to hide something from from you, we're, we're going to put it in a in a book. Let it never be said about you. See, if you if you put it in a book, no, I will find it. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Let it be said. If you put it in a book, he will find it. He will find it. That should that's what it should be about. That we are knowledgeable. The things we're doing, even in, in the house of God, are we even knowledgeable about them? 
What? How much knowledge do you know about what you are even doing in the house of God? How much knowledge do you have about it? How much knowledge have you gained in that area? In the family life? In pursuing the purpose that God put you here on earth for? How much knowledge do you have about it? Hello. I need a new field. Hallelujah. I can't remember, but it was maybe around 2010. 2010. I was so desperate. I'm just sharing my testimony with you. I said, God, I want to know your word. I've been a Christian in church. Every pastor opened the Bible and tells me God says this. God says, God says that, God, I want to get to the bottom of what you are really saying. I want to be able to take the Bible and say, this is God's word. This is what God is saying. And so I began to study. I've read so many books on how to interpret the Bible. Hallelujah. Amen. What I'm doing is not just, I get up and I'm doing it. I've read so many books about it. I've got so many books in my library about it. And I know what works, what's right and what's, and what's not right. I know what is helpful and what's not helpful. That's why we have designed that thing that we use in Friday services. And it's working and it's brilliant. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. So when I take the scriptures, so he said to me, oh, what about this? And, you know, and fellowshipping with people who are of the truth. It will get to your point. Someone says something, say, uh-uh, that's not truth. I say, you are too proud. No, 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 I'm not proud. I know. Right. It's not about being proud. It's, it's, it's not about being proud. Yeah. Unfortunately, I've been called all, all that. He thinks he's the only one that knows. You, you are thinking so because I've invested so much time in this, in, this, in this area. There are other areas I know I'm lacking and I'm going to go for it like never before. Mm-hmm. But when the Lord showed this to me, I said, oh my goodness, God. Together, let's go for it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That marriage of yours should not fail. Amen. That home of yours should not fail. Amen. Your relationship with your, with, your, with, your, with, your, with your children, it shouldn't fail. Amen. Relationship with your wife, it shouldn't fail. Amen. Relationship with your colleagues, it shouldn't fail. Amen. Let's go for knowledge. Amen. That will become better Amen. at doing it. Amen. Our church shouldn't fail. Amen. Let's go for knowledge, how to build things up. Amen. Let's break through yes, with knowledge. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. There's more, but my time is up. My time is up. But all I will say is, because knowledge is about intimacy, step number one, you've got to love it. Number two, you've got to decide you want it. And when you get in, dedicate to it. Hallelujah. Amen. Become committed to it. Hello. Amen. Children are born out of love, decision, and dedication. It doesn't come cheap. Hello. So the same principle. Love it. Decide you want this. And commit to it. Until you become and information becomes you. Then you move in that environment freely. There are many worlds around us, doors of greatness around us, doors of, you know, you know God's, God's opportune doors around us. But knowledge is what will usher us into them. Let's go for it. God bless you. Let's wrap on our feet. Let's pray. You possibly have been hearing me. I'm talking about knowledge of God. Knowledge of self and knowledge of life. If you're hearing me today, it's very likely you are more into the third option, knowledge about life. You know how to get to places. I can mention three, three towns like Manchester, Birmingham, York, Maybe you're a very good driver. You got good information. You know how to get to these places. You know all the, all the corners. You are very knowledgeable about them. You can even close your eyes and go there. 
because you've got knowledge of, of those things. But that would not count for what God requires of you. God says the land suffers with all the knowledge of life. The knowledge, without the knowledge, knowledge of God, you are still going to live under the curse. But today, you want to turn and say, Lord Jesus, I want to know God. I want the knowledge of God. I want to become intimate with God Almighty. Wherever you are, you want to lift up your hands and say, Lord, I surrender. Help me. Help me. Help me. And bring me into the knowledge of you, God, that I may know you. Save me. I want to be born again. I want to be a Christian, someone who knows God, who is intimate with God. This is what I want. Help me. Amen.